the Center for Historical Reenactments, which we co-founded in 2010. Um, it doesn't exist anymore, but I think both the Center for Historical Reenactments and NGO um, are about experimentation and collaboration. Um, with both uh, studio institutions, as I like to call them, um, I work together with other people, uh, artists uh, at CHR, um, and also artists at NGO, different people. And the idea is to really activate the questions um, or ways of, of posing questions that become enabling for us to, to, to work with historical materials uh, and also historical narratives um, from a South African perspective, um, but at the same time thinking about how relevant they, those questions are. Uh, for the rest of the world or other connected worlds. Um, and with CHR, we decided to, to stop the, the, the process of this collaboration, um, but also as a way of, of thinking about institutions and, and the fact that the end of institutions does not necessarily have to, to lead to a crisis. And what are other forms of, of working as perhaps a, a ghost or a haunting body? Um, so we continued in this kind of mode of haunting obsolete institutions and always also um, collaborating with other institutions and other people. Um, NGO is a space, so it is a physical space, um, more than CHR was. Uh, and it's about, it's a space that we own and, uh, and it's also about slowing down time and not doing too much um, and, uh, and, and because we have the space, we have the time and so we kind of take our time. So it's this kind of space that opens and closes for most of the, of the time. So we, uh, with CHR, that's why we stopped because there was this uh, danger that we, we start to, to maybe entertain questions that were not necessarily ours, but because uh, questions that come because of the pressure of, uh, of being sustainable, of being successful, uh, etc. So with NGO, we can more control this, uh, uh, this time so that we, we, we really stay with the questions for much more, for, for longer. What is the difference? I mean, uh, uh, Brazil and, and Germany are different places. Uh, there's sometimes similarities in, in, in certain places, but it, um, and one cannot help but compare, you know, of course, the two experiences. Um, there's, there's, there was much more uh, history of the Biennale as a, as a format in, in Sao Paulo than there is in, in Germany. There's more budget in Sao Paulo than there is in, in Germany. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, what was interesting for me in Sao Paulo is, is, a, is a big focus on education. In Sao Paulo, Biennale is, is you know, for the people. Um, it's a free event, you know, like, and, and, and also we created um, educational material before we created the exhibition. In, in a way, because these materials have to go to all the schools in Sao Paulo, who then, months after, come to see the exhibition, having studied it in school. So these are the interesting um, things for me to observe in Sao Paulo, and, and how really people um, in numbers really attend the, um, the exhibition, mainly also because it's free, it's in a park, um, it has a designated building, um, which was built in the 50s in, in Berlin. It's, it's, it's different um, that uh, KWU, where we are, is, uh, is almost a given in terms of the spaces that I use for the Biennale. Um, but each curator has to then go into the city and find spaces for, um, for the event. And I think also that is interesting because it's, it's a way to get to know 
the city, to get to know different organizations in the city, how they operate, um, and, uh, and also yeah, to understand the bureaucracy, um, the nature of bureaucracy uh, and, and, and how to, to work with this or against, against this or to dance with it, so, so, to, so to speak. So it's a, um, um, yeah, there's, there's some similarities and there's some differences. The team in Sao Paulo is much bigger than the, the team, um, the production team in, 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 in Berlin. This in Berlin is the 10th, um, so I'm curating the 10th um, uh, Berlin Biennale, so it is an anniversary uh, um, event. And it's good to think about that and to think back in, in, in history uh, of the Berlin Biennale. So some of, of the projects have those uh, hints of uh, looking at the institution that made the Berlin Biennale and, uh, and, and, the, and, and perhaps creating a portrait of that institution mm -hmm. as a way of, uh, of trying to understand what um, perhaps the next 10 years um, would uh, would be for the Berlin Biennale. Well, yeah, what tends to happen is that curator after curator want to create a, a, a different thing. But uh, I mean, I think for the 10th version, it's also important to think about what has been, um, what has been in place. Um, how to continue with certain things, but how also to disrupt certain, um, certain things. Berlin is... Uh, is um, seen as a very cosmopolitan place, um, which attracts young people from different parts of the world. Um, and so the question would be, does the Berlin Biennale itself reflect what Berlin um, is and has been for um, a number of years through this influx? Um, and and for, of course, for the exhibition to be able to, to have a conversation with uh, um, with um, this uh, particular history and present um, of Berlin. Also Berlin is where a lot of conversations that are relevant and urgent are, are happening um, and many different institutions are confronting um, really, um, let's say, difficult histories um, through collections uh, or, or um, or um, inviting other people to work with, with collections. Um, but also there are collections in, in the city of Berlin that are loaded in history, and it's good to, to be able to think about that. So for, for us, with the Berlin Biennale, the 10th Berlin Biennale, is what is more important is really to, to recognize what is happening in the city already. Um, and not necessarily to replicate that, but to find a position. So, and that's why we don't have uh, what we call a theme for the Berlin Biennale, but we try to find a position knowing very well that this position is always shifting. So it's, uh, it's also inhabiting the space of, of the unknown um, and, uh, and hoping that we create an event that has uh, an impact now, but also is a is a slow release, and the impact is also felt um, later for the next ten years. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at my, my, my practice, cu curatorial practice is part of my practice, it's not the whole of my practice, of course. Um, I work as an educator and then I also uh, run with other people these collaborative platforms. Mm -hmm. And 
and uh, and so I do think of my 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 practice within this triangle, which I I I, I don't want to break or to slice into into pieces. So for me, the educational aspect is is a given, and I you know we've also like looked at artists who who are also concerned with this, but more than education, it's a uh, it's it's new forms of 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 uh, of of knowledge of creating knowledge systems and perhaps these forms are not new necessarily, um, but you know they are not so much in the mainstream. Um, but it's uh, it's it's really about uh, thinking about new configurations of power through um, knowledge systems that you know perhaps. I'm more useful to look at now because you know so much else has failed, or we have been failed by, uh, let's say, um, the Western um, modes of of creating knowledge, and we have to start to work uh, um, in conversation with that and also against that. Well, I don't know, I think I've said in, in one interview that we are all post-colonial. Um, and uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anyone in this world who lives in a not post-colonial world. Like post-coloniality, you know, it, it doesn't, um, it's, uh, it's not something that is marked by, you know, the color of my skin. Uh, I think it's a larger con conversation, you know, because perhaps we can even argue that Czech Republic was colonized, um, and uh, and 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 maybe we need to take this word colonization and and unpack it and see what what it means. Um, and of course, we're sitting here in Berlin. For me, this is the most post-colonial place. Um, in, in, in the world because of its history and some of the many really important events that took place here. And which is why I was saying earlier that there's a lot of institutions who are dealing with these histories. Um, and, uh, and, and it's, it's for us to say, okay, these things are happening, you know, then we can, you know, sort of move on with other discussions. Mm -hmm. And I think this is important because colonization also has to do with uh, repression and, uh, and, and, and racism. And it's uh, a racism, as Toni Morrison said, said this, it keeps us explaining, it delays us, because all the time we have to be in this position where we have to explain to other people um, who have the, the privilege of not having to know um, and, 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 and so the, the Berlin Biennale, the 10 Berlin Biennale, is not going to be this platform of explaining um, again and again because for hundreds of years people have been writing books and, and trying to explain the colonial condition and the post-colonial condition and, and many subjectivities that have been formed by those historical conditions. Um, here we're interested in a platform that uh, um, that you know perhaps intervenes within that space to try to you know perhaps formulate new questions um, um, to be and also to embrace a kind of uh, obscurity uh, not because we want to hide things but we want to to make things clear in a different way and and with the hope that you know 
these conversations can stretch, stretch, you know, up to a point where they almost snap. And when they snap, we want to see um, whose face they land on. Yeah, like I, 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 I want to start to shy away from, from, from the term um, unlearning uh, because uh, sometimes these terms they do unfortunately become buzzwords and then they start to, to sound meaningless. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm interested perhaps in finding another um, way of, 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 of talking about this. I mean, of course, the idea of unlearning is to, um, is not necessarily stripping yourself of what you know, but what you do with what, um, uh, with all this information. It's, uh, it's similar to the term decolonization, which every other person and institution and text are writing about, you know, um, and, and, and for me, what becomes disturbing really is, is, uh, is the idea that decolonization um, is something that you go to do at work. Um, it's not like sometimes something that starts with the self. You know, it's like it's a nine to five kind of uh, uh, operation. And, and, and that's why we're not going to win because uh, decolonization is such a messy process. Uh, but if we don't start with the self, with um, um, how we describe things, um, and sometimes you sit in a room and someone says, oh, this place, it, it, it looks like I was, I'm in a painting. What painting? And then you realize that someone maybe is referring to Dutch painting, but like there's so much painting that happens in many other parts of the world that might not look like that room. So it's like those subtle things that we, um, um, that we encounter actually uh, in, as we move through different parts of, of the world um, where you kind of see that the, the world is not uh, seen in totality and I don't think that this is not possible. I think it's a, it's a possible uh, mission. Um, but people need to, to go and, and, and teach themselves. And, uh, and, and me, for one, I'm, I'm tired of sitting in symposiums, um, feeling like there's a kind of deja vu always, uh, because all the time you end up you know, trying to explain why we feel the, the way we feel. Um, and, I, and I think everybody must go there and do the work that needs to be done. Nobody's going to... I'm not hired to do this work here. Um, and, uh, and, and this uh, idea of opacity, I think, is a space also for freedom. Um, and the way that we've thought about it with the 10th Berlin Biennale is through conversations with our designer, Mazia Palivan, um, who, through our ideas, initial ideas, um, um, had this idea to work um, with uh, the dazzle camouflage, so so it, in a way we start the conversation with uh, with uh, uh, um, with a, a symbol that is based or, or comes from a war situation. The the sheep, the sheep's the dazzle camouflage sheep's from World War One, and and so the the the, the dazzle camouflage in pink and grey that you see is in reference to that. But is this idea that. Um, it, uh, it, those, 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 those warships, uh, they, they created those design, not not to be seen, but to, um, to not to be clear in terms of which direction they are going um, and where exactly to shoot the target. And I think for us, this is a, 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 a beautiful and poetic way of, of, of trying to, to, to refuse certain positions um, and to, to insist on, 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 on fighting for this grammar, which is, you know, of course, yet unknown. Um, but I think, you know, but of also 
um, developing the tools, you know, uh, or, or reshaping, reformulating the toolboxes of, of how we think about, uh, about subjectivities and complex subjectivities, especially. Ustedes van primero. Gracias por permitirnos tener esta experiencia, Iguana, también. Estamos casi al final del día. Final del día, estamos empezando. No, chica. Voy a con la una tarde, estamos a mediados del día. Estamos bien, Iguana. Estamos bien, Iguana. Ahora tú tienes los otros guantes. Ok. Búscalos, por favor, para, para que tú ayudes a la And it's the first time we work uh, together. Um, and so this is a, also a dance to know, um, yeah, how, how to work together. And, uh, and it's, it's different with each artist. Um, I met uh, Michelle and, and Lidella in Puerto Rico because me and my colleague Tiago de Paula Souza, we went on this trip um, to the Caribbean as part of our main research for the Berlin Biennale. So what's, what's beautiful is that one now has a budget to travel. Um, and for me, this was interesting that I have um, been given this budget. And I, and I wanted to, 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 to take this budget, which is, you know, a German taxpayer's money, um, which I'm not unfamiliar with uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person who works in this space. So I encounter German funding in a lot of my work. But uh, um, this, uh, uh, this was for me like um, the idea to take um, this German funding and do what it has never done for me. Um, and, and that is go to the Caribbean, which was the first time um, for both me and Tiago, um, and also for the Berlin Biennale to be organizing uh, through our production offices a trip to go to the Caribbean. And this was really interesting, the organization of this. How do you go from one island to the next, trying to avoid Miami <laughs> as much as possible? And, uh, and I think, you know, in, the, in those geographies, there's also a lot to learn. And this is where um, we met, also by chance, um, uh, with Las Nietas de Nono. Yeah, for us it's um, <laughs> another way to think also um, our art and, and the way um, how we can have this um, long conversation um, because um, our work is um, always looking out of institutions and in the way we present it and how we create. And so being here and also exploring um, other forms of dialogues, um, not even uh, like for the institution, but also like how we can um, save always um, our um, thoughts. I don't know how to say it, maybe in English, but my, it's my first um, language is in Spanish. But um, so that long conversations um, have that also. How, how we work and how we 
um, think our art out of the institution also, and, and then how we can maintain all this um, form of create inside us spaces that um, came from that, right? And also um, working with Gabi also make us feel like a nice trip on that, um, um, navigating um, that um, ocean. <laughs> Our backgrounds are not came from art, um, also because um, many things, and <laughs> um, and um, we are interested in, in give some voice to um, our family history, and also that has been very um, has always been under the carpet in in the Puerto Rican history, and so. For us, we have a lot of questions too, and most of them we were answering during our art process, and most of them has been um, questions about the mass incarcerations of men in our family that has been um, around uh, three year generations, and it's part of this um, big history in Puerto Rico that um, we are not talking about it, right? And also the um, questions about expropriation, the expropriations in sons um, that now in Puerto Rico, do you see that were not for living, but now they have these big uh, banks. So, but in the 40s, people were expropriated, and that's what our background. And so, all these questions about our family memories and also the big silence that were there um, came us to many other questions and how we can talk about this and how can we share this history and how we can um, write about them. And also when we are talking about this history, it's not just our family history. You see that um, black communities are um, reflected in that history. Um, so that's our themes and also how um, experimentations uh, on woman, a woman's body has been um, in this um, colonial history has been um, formed the way that women give birth, the ways that uh, they um, take out reproductive organs and so that's, that's what we are, that's our background. <laughs> and also why when we are um, looking at Cousin and to, um, ask her why, where she uh, born, she say in the prison. So all these histories has, has been our background and we want to transform them and also to write it, to write it down because you, uh, if it's not like that, we are not going to talk about it. And I think it's very important because it looks like in Puerto Rico it's not racism and also it's an um, hegemonic um, um, island, and, but it's not. And I think like that's our, the themes that we are working on and seeing our history as, a, our family history as an history of also the um, colonial island. Yeah, I think like um, audience can do whatever they want. <laughs> they are not limited to see. Um, but also we, we always try to push a little bit um, um, in different ways, but how we can just turn down um, the show, right? Like um, we are here to see this and, and, and that's it. And, and how we can just build it up a little bit more um, the space and how we can interact. And it's not a forced thing, it's like a very suggestive way to um, be in the same place with, with the people also. Um, for example, one of the pieces that we were showing in our grandpa, um, 
parent house, people were at the same with us, right? So that's, you know, like we don't want to be like the artist and the audience and, and also because, um, yeah, we, we are person, we are people. So, and, and I, I, we always are thinking like, some of this image about the artists and, and, and the piece of work is, has, has been distanced a little bit about um, the persons that are there for share the experience. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that we are still working on it and yeah, have different ways to, to embrace that. Yeah, so that's why we're here, like filling the space and also um, researching um, also and meeting with other um, people and also um, how is the view of the African diaspora here too and how they, um, they have the same questions as us, how we can start that conversation and how we can um, when we see experience, sometimes it looks very similar and how we can inform that also for our work and how we can fill the space and also how we can um, share experience that um, is not just because it's um, from us, but it's because part of the human history mm -hmm. and how we can put that part of the history in, in another context also. Mm -hmm. And so how we can erase the line of that's happened to us or that happens to them or that happens to the others and how we can just um, try to, to see how, is, um, how the lines cross each other too. Beyond art. <laughs> well, I can express very quickly that um, for us, all, um, the way that um, we were thinking art is the way to also to survive, in 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 a way to to express ourselves, in a way to share and 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 also to um, not share also knowledge, but also experience and and I think like. Um, I think art is, is one of expression and also it's not di divided from life and it's not divided from food and it's not divided from, uh, I don't know, the way that you dream. Uh, so how we can just put all this piece together and build an, an experience and something that um, is not because it's art, it's, it's the only way to to look at it. I think she answered for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's precisely it. Thank you very much.